All right, special thanks to Lenovo Legion and Microsoft for sponsoring this video. Today, I'm gonna to be unboxing and taking a close look at the new Lenovo Legion 7 gaming laptop. As most of you guys know, I don't really feature gaming laptops very often on this channel, but they might be more relevant than ever right now for two main reasons. The first of which being, the desktop GPU market is completely, this is a sponsored video, messed up. Suppliers can't keep up with unprecedented demand. Supply is scarce. Prices are more inflated than ever, and average gamers are up against an army of bots, scalpers, and crypto miners, to the point where even the cost of pre-built gaming desktops have skyrocketed in recent months. And despite all this, you can still find gaming laptops with current-gen GPUs in stock at MSRP. At least for now. How much longer that's going to last is uncertain, but at the moment, picking up something like this Legion 7 could possibly be your best shot at bringing high-end gaming into your home while keeping both your kidneys. Not to mention, with the state of the pandemic, at least here in the United States, businesses are starting to reopen and society is starting to normalize a bit. People are finally leaving the house to go to work and school, so computing on the go is quickly becoming a necessity again. And the combination of all these things actually makes a compelling case for gaming laptops and why you might consider buying one now. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and unbox the new Legion 7 for a closer look. All right, let's get this sucker. It's actually been a while since I've done an unboxing. I can't even remember the last time I did one of these. Oh, but I, I still got it. I still know how to open boxes. All right, we got some nice foam packaging here, very secure. Laptop nestled safely inside, nice sleeve. Oh, pretty, very pretty actually. I, I'm digging the uh, the gunmetal gray color. Um, it's kind of a refreshing change from the usual black. I'm gonna put this aside for now. Um, oh, okay. Only other thing in this box is the slim power brick. I think that's it. So, that, wow, that was the that was literally the fastest unboxing I've ever done. Let's fire this guy up. All right, got the system powered up, and we are into the operating system, which is Windows 10 Pro. Comes preloaded on this model looks very nice. I added my own uh, desktop background, as you can see, because I'm fancy. And uh, let's talk about the display first, because it's pretty unique here. We've got a 16-inch Quad HD display, but the resolution is actually 2560 by 1600. So we're talking about a 16 by 10 aspect ratio here, which gives us that additional vertical space. It's really nice for gaming and day-to-day, -day, just productivity, workstation stuff as well. Very unique to this particular model. It's an IPS display, three millisecond response time with a 165 Hertz refresh rate. It supports G-Sync, FreeSync. It has a 100% sRGB color gamut, Dolby Vision, VESA display HDR 400, and a 500 nit brightness. This thing gets super bright. I've been using like a 350 nit laptop for the last couple of years, and I've really started to notice just how dim it is. I can't take it outside whatsoever. Sometimes I want to work and reply to emails in the backyard. I just can't with that uh, brightness. But on this, where's the function key? Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Wait, that's that's the RGB brightness. Hold on, where's it? Where it is? Okay, here we go. Boom. Okay, it's like so bright it's overexposed on the camera there. But this thing does get really bright, so you can use it um, outdoors in broad daylight, which is really nice. It also has really Really thin bezels, which I, I actually prefer. It gives it a more clean, modern look, in my opinion. Have you guys been eating? But uh, let's talk about the actual specs, shall we? Because this thing is fully friggin' loaded. Obviously, there's different configurations available. The model that I have here has an AMD Ryzen 7 5800H, which is an eight core, 16 thread CPU. It's a super efficient chip, so it maximizes battery life, but it also boosts to 4.4 gigahertz to deliver that extra performance when needed. Uh, this does spec up to a Ryzen 9 5900H, I believe, which has the same core and thread count as this chip, but it just boosts higher, I think at 4.6 gigahertz, if I remember correctly. It's got 32 gigs of DDR4 3200, which is the max configuration for the Legion 7. However, However, it does support up to 64 gig max. So if you wanted to swap out those sticks for two 32 gig SO DIMMs, you could do that if you actually needed 64 gigs on a laptop. We've got a one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD on board, but you can kit it out with up to two terabytes if you need it. For our GPU, this unit has an RTX 3080 mobile, which is the max configuration for this laptop. That means second gen ray tracing, third gen AI tensor cores, and that's not to be confused with a desktop variant of the RTX 3080, but being realistic, that wouldn't really go well. You wouldn't want one of those in a laptop or a device this size anyway, unless you're okay with it being on fire. It's just not possible. That being said, this is using the same Ampere-based GA104 die that's inside of the desktop version of the RTX 3070 and the RTX 3060 Ti, so some pretty impressive silicon in here nonetheless. The GPU boost clock is 1545 megahertz, but I'm sure we're gonna see that go a little higher in our testing. 16 
16 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM at 1750 megahertz on a 256 bit memory bus. Overall, this laptop is a total beast. It's got a 94 watt hour battery with up to eight hours of battery life. Obviously that's gonna drop significantly if you're gaming, but it does feature Rapid Charge Pro technology. So you can charge this thing from zero to 60% in just 30 minutes. So not too shabby there. It also features a Legion True Strike keyboard. So it's got 100% anti-ghosting, a full-size number pad, which is huge for me. It comes in handy when I'm entering passwords or even if I'm like punching in my friend's gamer tags, like half of my friends have a string of numbers attached to their gamer tags. And it's always a pain if I'm doing it on a laptop because I got to use the keys at the top. And this is just really nice to have. That being said, I've had laptops before that had 10 key number pads that encroach too much on the rest of like the, the main QWERTY keyboard. And it totally sucks. It's, it's just too much of a sacrifice. But here, the keys are spread out totally fine. It's, it's large enough. You don't have to have like really tiny hands and look like you're getting a manicure while you're typing. It's awesome. As you can see, it's also an RGB backlit keyboard and it's going crazy right now. I mean, there's even RGB all around the thing. I mean, it, it's kind of like a, it's like a rave. It's like a rave going on on your desk. It's, it's absolutely insane. It does support uh, the Corsair IQ RGB lighting software, which comes preloaded. So you can customize it, configure it however you like, or disable everything completely if RGB is not your thing, or if you just want to be more discreet. Uh, one 1.3 millimeter key travel, and uh, the keys actually feel really good, really tactile and stuff. They're not very loud either. My favorite feature about this keyboard though, is that all the keys are vented. So the laptop cooling system is actually using the keys as an intake for the cooling of the GPU and the CPU primarily. I think that's a really smart move that, uh, that just utilizes the chassis to its fullest. Uh, we've got a large one piece trackpad, Thank God it doesn't have like the right and left clicks. That's just like more mechanical moving parts that are bound to fail or cause issues. And it's just a more seamless experience, I think, just having a single button. Uh, we've got two two watt Harman speakers with Nahemic 3D audio preloaded. Just gives you surround sound options, customized sound settings, profiles, things like that to really tailor your listening experience. On top of that, you also get plenty of IO on this thing. On the left side, you've got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C port that supports DisplayPort 1.4. So you can hook this up to an external monitor if you actually want to have a full blown desktop gaming experience, which is awesome. There's a combo audio jack for mic and headphone. And on the right side, you'll find a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port and an e shutter button, which cuts the power to the built-in HD webcam. Super cool feature. On the back side, there's even more connectivity. You get three USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports and another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port with that DisplayPort 1.4 connectivity, a full-size HDMI 2.1 port, RJ45 Ethernet, and your DC in for power. That was a lot of me blabbing. So why don't we go ahead and fire up some games now and just see how this thing performs under load so I can blab more about that. All right, we've loaded up CSGO, courtesy of Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass. And we're playing with the MSI Afterburner HUD right here so that we can actually see how the system's performing, temperatures, frame rates, and all that sort of thing. And I wanted to start off with a more CPU intensive title just to demonstrate two things. To show off the high refresh rate capabilities of the Legion 7 for games that actually need it, like esports titles and to showcase the Lenovo Legion AI engine, which is a system that leverages, as you might've guessed, artificial intelligence in order to dynamically allocate resources to the CPU or GPU, depending on the game that you're playing. And that's all for the purpose of increasing FPS. So because the system knows that this is a heavily CPU bound title, it's actually opening up the power envelope for the CPU while lowering power throughput to the GPU to give us the best performance possible. All in real time, automatically. You know, one of these days when AI takes over and tries to wipe out mankind, I'm gonna be like, you guys used to be cool. Remember when you used to help me quick scope noobs? Why'd you have to make it weird? So right now we're getting anywhere from two to 300 FPS, actually beyond that uh, in a lot of instances, which is well beyond the 165 Hertz refresh rate of the display. So we know our display is not a bottleneck in this case, which is fantastic. And our GPU actually for being a more CPU intensive game, our GPU is actually under uh, a good load right now, anywhere from 80 to 90% sometimes beyond that, but still only hovering around 7071C, which is really cool. Let me check what our CPU is at. 81C is the hottest it's got, which for a laptop and, and a CPU intensive game, that is really, really good. And with 16 gigs of VRAM, even at this resolution, we still have a ton of headroom on board in that area. We're only eating up maybe two and a half gigs right now. Okay, we're in Shadow of the Tomb Raider right now, which is definitely a more GPU intensive game. In fact, it's just a more demanding title overall compared to something like CSGO. Oh, this guy doesn't even see me. Hello. Yoink. 
Oh, what? That didn't, that didn't, there you go. That didn't, okay. So yeah, 97% right there. Oh, I'm getting shot at. The laptop's much better at multitasking than I am. But again, because we're taxing the GPU more now, the Lenovo Legion AI engine has now shifted resources to our RTX 3080 to bump our performance. As you can see here, we're getting a solid 60, 70 FPS right now. And this is at full 2560 by 1600, the native resolution. And we're at high settings as well. So um, this is definitely not an easy game to run at these settings, but uh, here we are doing a really good job. And I died again. Look at those temps, those temps. GPU is only at 72, what, how? I gotta check the CPU temps, 84. 84C is the max, and it's not even operating that most of the time. Speaking of which, the laptop's using Lenovo's Legion Cold Front 3.0 cooling system to basically keep everything in check, thermally speaking. And it's got a dual fan design, tons of ventilation all around this thing. I mean, top, bottom, sides, and again, even those keys are vented. So uh, it's doing a pretty good job, as you can see here. So much death. The last thing I'll add is that the system's actually pretty quiet. To be honest, I was expecting it to be a lot louder given the specs, just how fast this thing is, and how slim the, the actual chassis is um, for everything that's crammed in here. But to be honest, it's way quieter than I thought it'd be. So whatever they're doing under the hood seems to be effective. So wrapping things up here, first and foremost, this laptop is pretty loaded with current gen hardware. But despite that, the chassis is relatively thin and light. I think on the spec sheet it said it's somewhere around five and a half pounds, depending on the configuration that you get, but this thing slips into a backpack very easily and it won't feel like a brick while it's in there. And because it's got such high-end hardware, you've got gaming performance for days. This thing just absolutely slays frames left and right. It's got a 10 key number pad, which I personally really like. That's, that's one of my weird favorite things about it. Um, it just makes it a viable option for, for work and day-to-day -day use, which you know obviously I, I do all the time, not just for gaming. So so it's, it's versatile. Great IO, love the connectivity, love the fact that you can actually hook this up to a monitor and game like you're on an actual gaming desktop PC. So once again, thanks to Lenovo Legion and Microsoft for sponsoring today's video. I'll drop a link to the Legion 7 in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. With that said guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way and I'll see you guys next time.